Hey there, I'm Nathan and welcome to this video on build based activities in the classroom. Today we're going to explore a series of educationally designed worlds for both students and teachers to work together in a multiplayer world environment. Here we are, welcome to the starting room. To allow your students into the world select escape, followed by the multiplayer icon, then select start hosting, followed by confirm. Your students will use the generated join code to enter the world. This area is where they will initially appear. The starting room has four non-player characters and they're designed to help the students record and export their work. Selecting the non-player character will open the dialogue screen. From here, the students, they can select to learn more. The link will then take the students to a video providing instructions on how to do their chosen method. Immersive Reader is also built in, which means they can have the text read aloud along with many of the other great features that Immersive Reader has to offer. The other non-player characters can help with screen recording, 3D exporting and taking screen captures. Let's explore the fundamentals of these worlds. When you're ready, have your students move outside to the allocating station. Each of these worlds will consist of 40 individual build areas. It's recommended that you allocate your students a build area from numbers one to 40 before starting the game. Once the students or groups of students have their number, they can walk towards the allocated number and step on the pressure pad. Stepping on the pressure pad will teleport them to their build area. If a student goes to the wrong number, they can always return and go back to the correct one. Each build area also contains a chest with a book and quill, portfolio and camera. There's 18 types of worlds in total, a world containing a base of white concrete, blocks of grass and each available biome in Minecraft Education Edition. Each section of the biome worlds are an exact replica of each other. They also contain a green beacon so students can find their way back to the start position. The 18th world is slightly different. Once the students step on the pressure pad, they'll be teleported to the student control center to select the base they wish to build on. There's 10 bases they can choose from. They right click on the button to fill the build area with their chosen base. They can then move to the other end of the control center and right click on the go to the build platform button. From here, only their build area is going to be affected by the chosen material. This means that each build area could be different to the one next to it. Students can choose to return to the control center and change the settings. They also have access to a chest which contains a book and quill, portfolio and camera. They can also clear their build area and return to the start. Many features in these worlds can be managed from the teacher only section. There's no way to stop a student from entering this space. However, a loud bell will ring when it's accessed. The first feature we'll explore is the ability to control world builder by turning it on and off. Each of the controls in this area has a purple button. To run the command, right click on the button. World Builder helps to manage where the students can and cannot build. In this world, students are restricted to the white concrete space. You can see how it's not possible to build or destroy on the deny block or the green fence. However, I can destroy or build on the white blocks. Each build platform is surrounded by a perimeter of border blocks. These blocks prevent students from jumping over or flying to another student's build area. Turning World Builder on will remove this barrier, which means that students can freely move between each build platform. The control area also contains a command which will return every player back to the starting room. The only command which does not have a button is the ability to allow students access to the structure block for 3D exporting. To allow access, students need operator status. To do this, select T or enter on your keyboard and type forward slash OP at A. 
Students can then access the structure block and view their work as a 3D object. They can also export their 3D structure and save it to their device. Always revoke operator status when they are finished by typing in forward slash DEOP at A. Leaving operator status on could result in students changing world settings. The next setting is one designed to help gain the attention of the class. And the excitement of building, clicking this button will cause the students to go blind and move at a snail's pace. Click the off button to return the students back to creative mode so they can start building again. You can choose to give students either a camera with a book and quill or a camera with a portfolio. When you click this button, the students' hot bars will empty and then be replaced only with the items that you have selected. You also have the ability to control if students can use mobs in the world. Sometimes students can get a bit carried away with overspawning mobs. Turning this off will remove all mobs from the world. You may choose to turn mobs on towards the end of a lesson or a project. You can also clear all potions, remove agents, and clear all players' hotbars. The last setting is the ability to decide if students can access and use common issue items such as slime balls, snowballs, potions, ender pearls, tridents, and arrows. When this setting is off, they can throw such items, they can fire arrows across build platforms, and they can use the ender pearl to bypass the barriers and teleport to another student's build area. When this setting is on, students will see the items in their inventory, however, they'll be unable to access them. To leave the teacher only section, select the non-player character to return back to the starting room. I really hope you enjoy using these worlds and discovering the power of play.